<laughs> this is the new M3 MacBook Air. And honestly, it does look a lot like the older model, the M2 MacBook Air, which I have conveniently placed on my desk. And yes, if you swap these around and I came to sit down and record this video and had to pick out the M3 model, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you because they look exactly the same. There's, there's no difference here. But despite looking exactly the same, you know that's not the whole story. There are some improvements on this M3 model that honestly make it a better laptop for more users and some surprise features that I wasn't really expecting that make it a better value than this M2 MacBook Air. But despite this being a better value than this older M2 MacBook Air, there are still some things that frustrate me about this laptop, which has me asking, Apple, why do you keep doing this? So yes, we started this off by saying the M3 MacBook Air looks exactly the same as the M2 MacBook Air, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Don't forget, this is only the second time that Apple is reusing the body for the MacBook Air. It literally got a redesign with that last two M2 generation, and it brings over a lot of great things. It's still super thin, super lightweight, has excellent build quality, a fantastic keyboard, a fantastic trackpad. The bezels on it are smaller, it's a nice 13 6 inch display. It's got, you know, good display quality, good speakers, and, you know, it's just a really nice portable laptop. It's got the MagSafe charging port, two USB C ports, right? I don't need to go on and on about the design of this laptop because, again, it is the same as the M2, with maybe one thing that should have been new, but maybe isn't, right? Apple said there's a new fingerprint resistant coating on this M3 model, but here is my old M2 model for reference. Now, let me say I've been using this one for over a year at this point. If you look at it, I would say it's more fingerprinty, but again, I've been using this for a lot less time, this new M3 model, and the fingerprints look pretty bad on it already. So even if we, you know, say Apple added a new fingerprint resistant coating, and even if it does make a slight difference, which I'm kind of questioning, does it? Um, I still feel like the smudges or fingerprints are still showing up on this midnight color. So if that bothers you, you should probably pick another color. Now, there are a few surprise features on this M3 MacBook Air. The one surprise feature isn't really a surprise because Apple is all too happy to advertise to you that the new M3 MacBook Air can now support up to two external monitors connected to it at the same time, provided that the MacBook Air lid is closed. This is by far the most important new feature on the M3 MacBook Air and probably a reason why a lot of people who are still on older Intel MacBooks are finally going to switch over to this new laptop. And I say that because over the years of reviewing the M1 and the M2, I cannot tell you how many comments I have gotten from people who were interested in purchasing a MacBook Air, but couldn't because it didn't support dual monitors. And the only other choice for them if they wanted a MacBook was to spend $2,000 on a pro level variant of the MacBook Pro. That was the cheapest laptop up until this MacBook Air that could do dual monitor support natively. So I think that's a really nice feature to have on this MacBook Air, but there is one problem with it. And that is that in order to use this feature, again, you have to make sure that the MacBook Air lid is closed. Now, yes, this probably isn't the biggest problem for most users because if they are using a feature like dual monitor support, it's more than likely they have like a little workstation set up and they're gonna have an external keyboard and an external mouse. But uh, there are times where maybe you want to connect to a, you know, dual external setup and you want to use the built-in keyboard and trackpad that are already on the MacBook Air. And right now, at least, you just can't do that. As soon as you open the lid on the MacBook Air, the second external display that you were connected to automatically disconnects and turns off and you're just left with that one external display. And I feel like this would be an easy fix for Apple to do in software. Like if they detect that you have two external monitors connected to your MacBook Air and you open the lid, maybe they don't have to automatically turn off that second display. Maybe they just keep the MacBook Air display off until you unplug it and then the native display would turn on 
the MacBook Air again. It would be nice if we could still use our keyboard and trackpad when connected to an external monitor. I don't think that's too much of an ask. The second surprise is actually a surprise, and that is that Apple fixed one of the biggest issues people had with the M2 MacBook Air, and that is that it shipped with a slower internal drive than the M1 MacBook Air. This was a huge controversy when the M2 MacBook Air launched. It basically had half the read and write speeds of that older, cheaper M1 MacBook Air. But now when I ran the disk speed test on the base model 256 gigabyte version of the M3 MacBook Air, it had the same read and write speeds as the M1 MacBook Air. I was getting around 2,800 read speeds and around 2,200 write speeds. And on the M2 Air, it was about 1,500 for both of those. So no longer does the base model have painfully slow storage. This is going to make a lot of people happy. And those are really the only new features on the M3 MacBook Air besides the obvious one. And that is that the M3 MacBook Air gets an upgraded chip over the old M2 MacBook Air. It doesn't have an M2 chip in it. It now has an M3 chip in it. Uh, and listen, if you benchmark that M3 chip, it's impressive, it really is. When you look at single core performance, it is up there in levels of performance right alongside the M3 Max MacBook Pro. It is one of the most powerful computer chips available in single core performance. And then even in multi-core performance, it is really impressively powerful, especially when you consider that this is all running in a fanless laptop that is just super, super thin all around. The M3 chip is impressive, but so was the M2 chip. So was the M1 chip. When we're talking about general computing use, the target audience for this base level MacBook Air, there's not much to say here that's new here. I've seen people online talk about how they've upgraded in the past from the M1 to the M3, and they were expecting really increased levels of performance. And for most users, you know, the general users where this computer uh, is aimed at, that really isn't what is gonna affect your performance at this point. Is the M3 faster than the M2? Yeah. Is the M2 faster than the M1? Yeah. But the M1 was already so fast that if you clicked on almost any app in the dock, it would open up almost instantly within like one or two seconds. And yes, if you measured it and, and did that same test on the M3, they would open slightly faster. But when the M1 was already opening apps within a second, whatever speed improvements happen on the M3 doesn't really matter all that much. So it stands to reason that most consumers wouldn't benefit from getting more speed increases on these chips. Most consumers would probably benefit from Apple keeping this MacBook Air at the same $1,100 price point, but then giving us more storage with it, and then giving us more memory with it. Because again, most users aren't gonna notice the speed improvements from M2 to M3 or even M1 to M3, but they might notice having more storage to store their files on, or they might notice that they can open applications and have a bunch more open and they might notice that, hey, when they open up Final Cut Pro, when they finally get to try some of these creative tasks that require a little bit more power, it's gonna run smoother on a M1 MacBook Air that had 16 gigabytes of memory than it does on an M3 MacBook Air that has eight gigabytes of memory, despite the M3 being more powerful. Because in some use cases, the memory is gonna matter more than the actual processing power of the chip. And, you know, when I ask myself, why does Apple keep doing this? Why do they keep shipping these base level models with such low storage and such low memory? The, you know, my positive outlook on this, because this is such a great computer, even at the base level, you know, tier, is that they keep doing this because it is a great laptop. It does work really well. But you always have to use those buts but you might need more storage, but you might need more memory. And I, you know, remember, I, I feel like this may be less true with Apple in modern days, but the old saying with Apple was that when you buy something from them, it just works. And even though this base model might honestly be fine for 80% of users out there, maybe even 85% of users out there, I would love to be able to not say, but anymore. I would love to be able to say, 
hey, this base model comes with 16 gigabytes of memory, or hey, maybe scale it back a little bit, 12 gigabytes of memory, just four gigabytes of memory more. Listen to me, Apple, you know, we're, we're gonna bargain here. Four gigabytes of memory more, and it comes with a 512 gigabyte hard drive at the same price point, and then all of a sudden, this becomes a machine where I'm not saying, but I'm saying get, get it. Because at that level, it becomes a machine you can recommend to so many more users. It becomes a machine you don't have to worry about. It becomes a machine that doesn't have the ifs, ands, or buts, no crevits, right? It just becomes a great laptop that you don't have to worry about, one that is really easy to recommend. So the M3 MacBook Air is a great laptop. The it's better than ever, has dual display support, has the fast internal drive again, thank God. But if you need more storage, you're gonna have to spend $200 more. And if you need more memory, if you wanna use intensive applications, you're gonna have to spend $200 more on 16 gigabytes. That's the video. If you liked it, give me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.